Hey, welcome everybody, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the APA Classic boards as compared to uh, the APA Journal um, modified boards. There's a couple of different things that you can do with APA Baseball. One of those things is, of course, use the, the Master Game. The basic game with kind of advanced, um, you know, uh, aspect. And then finally, you can have the Merino boards. Those are available as well that uh, change up the um, pitcher uh, effectiveness and so forth. And, and then finally, from what I know, you have the Apple Journal boards that create a little bit more variety to the fielding system that APA has in place. Now, just remember, <clears throat> as the box says, APA came about in uh, 1951, right? But since it came uh, about in 1951, it was in development in the 40s. And Dick Seitz, the creator, inventors, and so forth, was uh, not a guy that uh, was into a lot of you know, um, corrections and modifications. And if you really study the history of APA, you're going to find that it changed very little. It changed very little from the late 50s to the present. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been changes since that time, but they've been minimal. And you can, you know, go into, I think, Zach's manual of the history of APA and you will find that to be true. Again, there's been changes, but there haven't been a whole lot of changes. Now, these older games developed in the 50s, Stratomatic was developed in the 50s, released in the early 60s. Um, you know, were they from another time and era and that time did not lend itself well to changing, all right, to change. It was a little bit, you know, conservative and so on. And uh, even through the 80s and 90s, what a lot of what Stratomatic did was add layers to their game, but not really change the fundamental mechanic of the game. They added some layers saying, you know, the, if you look at it in... Uh, a metaphor of the auto industry would be like, okay, we're going to keep on selling, you know, this 1956 Chevy, but we're going to also have a 19, you know, 69 Chevy, and then we're going to have a 1979 Chevy, and and you can buy those uh, as well. So basically, that's what uh, Stratomatic has done. Just added, you know, um, the different layers on top of the previous layers. I want to quickly go over some classic cards and uh, these were very very unique in that really the what stands out about these cards are that maybe one-third of the card is taken up by information on the player these cards are different than modern cards that come with a lot of stats and the the player's name is is sort of an afterthought you know, in these classic cards, what happens is that the the card was about the player and his numbers were almost secondary, you know, which is something that brought these cards to life for me as a kid. Uh, the reason I'm talking about Apple is because I've been an Apple enthusiast for a very long time, probably since 1976, I believe was my first season. And there's I know there's a lot of us that have been playing Apple before that. But APA and Stratomatic are really the two um, most uh, popular and well-recognized games. I think Stratomatic has continued with the same um, um, uh, players. So they've constantly gone maybe the more of a online route. They're moving away from the cards and dice aspect. They kind of do some special releases, monthly releases of a set, but they don't do very much more than that. Whereas APA, it was bought out by uh, by a person in uh, 
Georgia, and he continues to produce the card sets. Of course, not these classic card sets anymore, um, but a more modern version of these, of these card sets with the master symbols on them and with stats on them and so on. And um, so that's, that's where we stand. Now, these are the cards that I use. I love these cards. They have a real nostalgic value for me. So these are the ones I use. And I'm going to be playing a game that I found on YouTube, the Royals, New York uh, Yankees at Royals. And I believe it's June 9th, 1979. And um, Thurman Munson is in that lineup for that pit time period. So these are the, the classic boards. And I want to remind everybody that APA, this is APA Basic, which I'm talking about today, but APA Basic has an optional advanced modifier for pitching and fielding. So, and that's, um, it tells you about it at the bottom of the B chart, which really the B chart is the runner on second base chart. That's how... You know, um, APA Classic has four boards, back and front, uh, bases empty, runner on first, runner on second, runner on third, first and second, second and third, um, bases loaded. And uh, so at the bottom of B, at the bottom of B, you will see the optional pitching rules for advanced players, and it's basically a great reduction. So if within three innings your pitcher uh, gets hammered and gives a five earned runs, he will, uh, his grade will be reduced. If he gives up five runs, would be reduced to a B grade, and a C pitcher would be reduced to a C grade, and so on and so forth, using this advanced system. Now there's also an advanced fielding system, and that's at the bottom of chart C, and this is for fielders. So for individual fielders, and you'll see that number right here, for example, a three is the top, fielding ability for a center fielder so he would be a fielding column one as an individual regardless of what his team is because with APA you add up all the players and then you would get fielding column one fielding column two or fielding column three with this optional system your team could be fielding column three but if you trade for a great center fielder a three like Amos Otis then you would use whenever the ball is hit to Amos Otis on whether it's a 16 because that's a center fielder's number or a 31, he would probably make a better play. And this goes even further when it comes to the uh, modified boards that were released in the APA journal. All right, so let's get to, we're gonna be looking at the backside of chart A. Okay, we're going to be looking at the, the backside of chart A, the runner on first chart, and we're just going to be noticing some things. Now, APA has some minor changes that are affected by the team score. So the way you do by team defensive score is like, he's my center fielder, he's my left fielder, uh, this is my, actually he plays third ba first base in that game. So you add all these numbers up, the three, and the and the two and the the two and and then you come up with a number and that number is going to be the number that tells you what column fielder your team is going to be where you're going to be looking for put outs all right so that is how appa works and let's just quickly look here whether you're a 1 or you're a 2 um, you're still going to get a double play on a 12. Everything remains the, stay, the same up to 11. Those are the hit numbers. But once you get into 12, everything's going to stay the same on uh, 1 and 2. But when you get to 3, that double play becomes a fielder's choice. So instead of getting two outs, you only get one. Strikeout is always at 13. Base on balls is always at 14. F hit by pitch is always at 15. Um, now, this is 16. You're going to get a... On fielding column one, the top fielding team will get a fly out, but a runner could advance. An F to second tags up. Uh, on fielding column two, which is your average fielding team, is going to basically get a single to second, but an F can go to third on an error to the center, on the center fielder, 
with two outs and any runner to third on an error by the center fielder. And then finally, on 16, it's a first on error, runner to second, error center field, F to third, with two outs, any runner to third. 17 on fielding column three, which is the worst, is going to be a single. And runner to third and batter to second on an E9. 17 is going to be a single to right, runner to third, F scores, batter to second, so no error there. But here on fielding column one, single to right, runner out at third. So if there was a, f a runner, obviously there's a runner on first base because we're using that chart, runner on first base chart. So the runner will get thrown out at third, so they'll pick up an out, and then the batter will make it uh, to second on the throw to third. All right, 18. 18 is interesting because 18 is going to be an, uh, a ground ball to the shortstop, will be an out. But on the fielding column two, it's going to be an error on the shortstop and runner to third. And then um, on fielding column three, it's going to be the same as fielding column two. So you can have a terrible, terrible shortstop, uh, uh, a six or a seven, and he could do the same amount of damage as a B shortstop, which would be like an eight. A nine or a ten shortstop would, of course, make the out. So there's no real distinction there between a terrible shortstop and an average shortstop, which one was one of the shortcomings that the APA Journal um, identified. So on 19, that's the third baseman ground ball. It's a single to third, runner to uh, a single to, th to third, runner to second on the worst fielding column. The middle fielding column is a single to third, runner to second. And then on the best fielding column, it's a single to third, runner to second. So the, again, there is no difference between a top fielding third baseman, right, like an Arenado, and uh, a poor fielding third baseman like a J.D. Davis. It's pretty much all a single to third, runner to second. So that is another kind of disappointment identified by the APA Journal. Now, um, on 20, which is the second base error number, the top fielding second baseman makes the play, makes sense. But the fielding two second baseman, the average second baseman, makes an error and a runner to third, and the worst fielding second baseman does the same. So there's no difference between two and three. 21 is the error on the first baseman. Uh, there's an out. First and second on error, runner to third. So 6E1, uh, 6E3 on fielding column one. First and second on error, runner to third. 6E3 on column two. And the same on column three, except the F scores. They're always kind of giving, you know, losing outs. The, the worst fielding teams are usually the last place teams, and they're usually giving away outs. 22 is also a hit by pitch number. 23 is caught stealing. And pretty much they're all exactly the same. Uh, runner out stealing and ejected from the game. So this is a little bit of an unusual play. 24 is a straight double play across. 25 is a straight double play across. 26 is fearless choice, fearless choice, fearless choice, straight across. Uh, third base, 27, is of course the X pitcher strikeout, but it's an out with a runner going to second on the third fielding column. Uh, on the second fielding column, it's a fielder's choice, and on the first fielding column, it's a double play. So that would be your Arenado turns a double play, whereas somebody that's middle of the road only gets a fielder's choice out of it. 28 is to short, but 28 on the, the top shortstop will get a fielder's choice out of it. 29 is going to be right back to the pitcher. A lot of people say there's too many back to the pitcher. On fielding column B, it's a 1-6 to six fielder's choice, 1-3 to three with two outs. But on fielding column 1, it's a 1-3 to three runner to second, which doesn't make really sense. Um, it should be the other way around. They should put the fielder's choice here. But they didn't do that. I guess they wanted this to happen more often. It wasn't happening enough, so they put it in the middle. Um, and that's and then over here it's just a runner to second, the same as so fielding column one and fielding column three are the same on 29. On 30, it's all the same across, 32, all the same across, and that's your left field put out, right center field put out, and right field put out. And then of course that's uh, uh you get additional put outs by the, the pitcher grade to those places, depending. Um 33 is a pop out to the third baseman. 34 is a pop out to the shortstop. 35 is a foul out to the catcher. Of course, it has the W rating of a walk if the pitcher gives up a lot of walks. 36 is a wild pitch straight across. 37 is a caught stealing. Uh, I'm sorry, picked off, picked off, pick, picked off. Same for the three columns. 38 is runner steals second as holes. 
39 is runner caught stealing across the board. The only thing that changes is who it's to. 40 is out at first, runner to second, three to one, F to third. 40 is three to six put out, and 40 is caught stealing, two to six. And then 41, of course, is the double play um, with injury. It's a fielder's choice with injury and double play with injury. So one and three are the same. We're a little bit different in uh, fielding two. Finally, 40, uh, 42 is hit by pitch across the board. So now we're going to look at the, the um, APA journal boards. Now these here are going to be the APA journal boards, and I laminated mine. You can print yours out and go to the APA Facebook group, and they have these boards in the file section if you're interested. And I'm going to go over the runner on face board, which is the backside of chart A. Remember that APA Classic has four charts, and the modern set of, of it's really a book, um, I think recently they came out with this huge large book. There was a smaller book right prior to the large book, and that's the one I use. It came in this box right here. It's just an eight and a half by 11 book, spiral bound book. And all these books pretty much are the same with some slight differences. So don't feel that, oh, he's talking about the, the old charts and those don't apply to me because I play with the new charts. Really, it's pretty much the same thing. In many instances, in most of the instances, it's the same thing because I do play with the new book as well. Um, so anyway, let's let's look at these this runner on first chart and look at the difference. Now, pretty much there there may be some changes to one to eleven, some slight changes. Uh, for example, on three, it's the original. Uh, on three, it says double to center, runner scores s out at home, uh, with two out, even s scores. They move, they, they move away from throwing guys out because they're slow in, in the APA journal boards. Um, for example, on eight, it's S out at third unless you tell them to play it safe and move from first to second, which I do automatically. I just say at the beginning of my games, okay, all S is just stop at second base so I don't have to deal with that. Um, they moved away from having that in the in the APA journal boards, single runner to second. So they just do everybody to second right there. Um, so a lot of people complained about, why do I have to have my guy thrown out every single time I get a single with a runner on first and he's a slow runner? It doesn't give me anything for, for two outs, right? It doesn't say anything for two outs, you know? Uh, and he never, a slow runner can never make it to third. So that a lot of people complained about that, and that was corrected by the APA journal. I don't know that it's been corrected in the modern boards. I can't. I, I don't remember that it has been. But anyway, but I'm sure half half the world would complain if you did wanted to make that change. So there's some upper changes to the first eleven numbers, which are the hit numbers. But I'm not going to be really focused on that. What I'm going to be focused on more than anything on fielding one, two, and three. And uh, okay, what this does, and let me show you what this does. It has to do with the second die roll. You know, APA throws two dice. A red and a white. Well, the second, uh, the second number, uh, the white one is if it's a one or a two, you're going to use fielding column three. So let's say your team is fielding column two, and you roll a your result is a twelve. Well, if if your uh, your two, right, is going to be um, is is going to take you to basically fielding column three. A one and a two result is going to take you to fielding column three. Um, so if you roll a three to six, right, you're going to use fielding column one. So a fielding column two can either make a double play out of it, or it can just get a fielder's choice out of it. So it gives you that variety. So they can have an outstanding, a fielding column two player is kind of in between where he can make an outstanding play, a web gem play, or he can really drop the ball and, and kind of just barely get the fielder's choice. And this is the third baseman who's making that play, by the way, on 12. 13 is a strikeout straight across, except, mind you, if you're a fielding column three and the catcher is a five, which is a really terrible catcher. It's a foul ball, two strikes on batter. Catcher drops foul tiff. If batter rolls another 13, strikeout. A C6 catcher would, would get the strikeout. So then it starts differentiating between the levels of catchers, because remember, you have a catcher. Five, a catcher six, a catcher seven, a catcher eight, 
and I believe a catcher nine, and I'm not even sure if catchers go to 10. Hold on, I can check that out here on one of these boards. Um, I can't I can't remember if catchers can go to 10, but that's not really ultimately what's most important right now. Um, catchers may only be able to go to nine, but either way, you get the idea. So base on balls are 14, is straight across, so these are blank. 15 is hit by pitch straight across, so it's blank. 16 is the center fielder error number, so a an Amos Otis type fielder in center will run it down, and he makes the put out. It's a single; it doesn't reach, so the the range uh, fact, factors in on a fielding column two. He doesn't get to the ball; it drops in front of him. But with a fielding column three outfielder, a one, it's first, second, and third on error. Runner scores. Error. Center fielder. S batter stops at second. So that is pretty crazy. So, so you, you basically it's it's you know it's a, a a run scores on an error, but the S batter would stop at second. That's pretty extreme. Um, Seventeen, fielding column two, you'll get the best of both worlds again. One to four, the white die would tell you that hey, um, it's going to be a single. Fielding column three. Runner to second on an error by the right fielder. Uh, uh, runner scores, okay, single to right, runner to third. Runner scores uh, and batter to second on a wild throw by the right fielder. That could happen one to four. If, it's, if you roll five or six, you're going to get a single runner out at third. Right fielder uh, uh, to third baseman, batter to second on throw to third. So an average uh, fielder can either make a great play, an outstanding play, um, where he doesn't really get to the ball, but he ends up throwing the, the runner out of third, or can make a terrible play and uh, a run scores. Um, so that's center fielder, right fielder, not so much left fielder. Okay, so left fielder comes up in other situations. Here then we go to the shortstop. Shortstop one to five result, first on an error, but on a six result, it would be a put out. So that's a that's a that's the difference. For example, um, in the original charts, the shortstop is always making an error so there. Put out an 18 um, for the shortstop. Um, so the shortstop would make errors. You could be asking yourself, well, when does the shortstop make errors? He makes errors in a different situation. I think it's with bases empty he'll make an error. Um, so here on fielding column three, you see it differentiates between a six shortstop a seven shortstop, an eight shortstop, and here's a nine and a 10 shortstop. So a six shortstop uh, makes an errant throw and runner advances uh, first and second on error, runner to third. Um, but it's a seven shortstop, first on error, runner to third. It's only one base error rather than a two base error. So it, it distinguishes between the different levels of fielding. Now the 19, remember, is the third base. Here it could be one to five, it goes to three, and uh, a roll of a six would go to A. So he, the third baseman could get a, uh, make a great play out of it. Uh, in this case, 19 is not a double play. Hold on a second. Was it a double play in... No. Okay. So 19 is actually a put out in the original boards. It's a single. Here it's going to be 1 to 5. It's probably going to be a first on error run at a second, E5. So... So, you know, an Arenado is still going to make the play, but anyone in between, an average, will have a chance for an error, most likely. But there's that chance that he can just uh, basically make the put out as well. All right, the 20 is the second baseman out number, one to five. You would look on, f uh, no, one to five, first on error, runner to second. On a six, out at first, runner to second. And then 20 would be always a put out. He, the second baseman would get errors in other situations. And then the 20 um, now d distinguishes between a five second baseman and a six second baseman, whereas the five makes first and second on error, the six makes just one base error. 21 is uh, first baseman. So here you're going to use either fielding column three or fielding column one, depending on what you roll. One, one to three, die roll one to three, you're going to be looking at fielding column one. Uh, die roll four to six, you're going to be looking at fielding column, uh, I'm sorry, fielding column three. And uh, four to six, you'll be looking at fielding column one. 23 is runner out stealing across the board. 
Darrow run to three runners ejected for disputing umpire's decision. 24, an average fielding team will get the double play, as will a fielding column one team, the top fielding column one team, defense. And on uh, a fielding column three, and, uh, it has a second baseman of six or seven use fielding column two. And that would give you the double play. So there, it distinguishes there. 25 is always a double play. 26, here you get a fielder's choice if you're a B team or a B fielder. Uh, then you, it distinguishes between a, 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 a medium uh, top fielding second baseman and, and a, a top top fielding second baseman where the nine fielding second base, baseman gets a double play out of it. The 27 is the third baseman number. You're either going to use one to five here or you're going to use six here. 28 is another shortstop number. One to three will be uh, out at first. Um, or four to six will be a fielder's choice. So the, the better fielding shortstop will get a fielder's choice out of it. 29 is one to three, one to six, or one to six. So they've improved that. They've corrected that. They made an adjustment there. So because in the original boards it was one to three on the top fielding uh, team and on the low fielding team, the poor fielding team. 30, 31, and 32 stays the same across the board. Uh, Pop-ups stay the same. Foul ball to catcher stays the same. Of course, with these um, adjustments for the X, Y, W on the pitcher's cards, and I'll show you that where that is, so you get an idea. He only has a Z, doesn't have an X, Y. Let's see. Uh, Busby walked a lot of guys, so he has a W. So on a 35, he will walk somebody. All right. Wild pitch stays the same across. 37 changes here under B which your average column is B. Sometimes I don't feel like counting the numbers, and I f if I feel they're pretty well matched up, and I will just use the B column with the individual adjustments for individual fielders, which would make me sometimes bring me to, to one or bring me to three, just to save time. So it's kind of like my own hack, personal hack. But 37 here has strike, runner picked off, S holes, which makes sense, right? S is not getting a big, a big lead. On, on fielding column one, strike, runner out, stealing. And uh, two, three, put out six. I guess it's a pickoff, and then they throw the shortstop to get them. But in, in 37, with a five catcher, a six catcher, there's a strike, runner to second on a wild throw by catcher. If he's terrible, a five, really low. Guy who never plays catcher, just filled in a couple of times. Or a, a, C, a, a C6 catcher, strike, runner holds first. So nothing happens if you have a, a six catcher. All right, so um, 38 remains the same. Basically, it's out, runner out stealing. Oh, no, runner out stealing on fielding column one, but runner steals second on fielding column two and fielding column three, whereas the S holes on all of them. 39 in the B is out stealing, S holes. Strike, runner out, stealing, same thing. So it's across the board is the same. 40, it's going to be a fielder's choice in the middle. Runner advances, 3 to 1. Fielder's choice here, 3 to 6. And then a double play, look at that, on fielding column 1. So again, now those great teams are going to get a lot of extra outs, and that's going to make the difference between winning games and losing games. That's how Apple ensures that the better teams are at the top. Now, the last number that we're going to look at and of course, well, the last number is 42. That's going to be hit by pitch across the board. But 41 is an interesting number. It's an unusual event number. Here it's going to be a 1 to 3 use fielding column 3. 4 to 6 use fielding column 1. So fielding column 1 would be a double play with the runner at second injured. Um, but on, on fielding column 3, it's going to be safe at first. Fielder's choice, runner out at second, and is injured sliding. So it goes from a double play on 1 to 3. It goes to a fielder's choice. And you get either or when you're in column, fielding column two. So there's more of a variety of re fielding results using um, the, the APA journal boards. So if you want a little extra, you're gonna, you can use these boards. You can print them out. You can try them out to see if you like them just to add some spice you know, to the app experience. Um, and that is pretty much, one thing I really like about the APA journal boards here is first it has rare plays, a rare play chart. 
okay? And what it did was it, it uh, brought together the Sacrifice Bunt booklet, a crazy little booklet, which I brought here so you can see, which never made much sense to me. Um, this is the, the, so if I want to sacrifice, look what I have to deal with. Sacrifice with runner on second. Sacrifice with runner on third. Sacrifice with first and second. Sacrifice with first and third. Sacrifice with second and third. Bases full. And then, of course, two pages for hit and run. I think they really, really went overboard. Um, pretty ridiculous, if you ask me. I, I'm happy with just rolling 1d6 for sacrifice. So basically, the Appa Journal brought it all into one page. So, uh, actually, I think it's two pages, back and front. Yeah, back and front. So, but it simplified everything. You know, the, the, the better the top numbers, the hit numbers are always gonna be a successful sacrifice. Then you have some lower numbers that are successful sacrifices. Then you have the, the numbers that are kind of double plays and stuff where something negative usually happens, like a fielder's choice and that sort of thing. But it simplified the bunts and it's much easier to bunt now. I don't have to go through a whole booklet you know, fumble through the pages. I just have the charts with me and I can use the sacrifice bunt chart. Then of course it did the hit and run. It put the hit and run pretty much on two pages. Hit and run. APA only encourages to do to, for you to do a hit and run. And it tells you right here in the book. Um, let me see. Okay, the offensive team manager may use the sacrifice at any time with less than two outs. Attention sacrifice before K one third is occupied. So whenever sacrifice do not change the uh, hit and run. Hit and run. The hit and run may be used when runners are on first and third with none out, one or two outs. With none, one or two outs. So they let you use a hit and run with two outs, which doesn't make really a lot of sense. Well, the, the, the hit and run is happening, right? automatically basically with two outs but that's okay that was you know that's how they interpreted that but somewhere it does tell you I, I don't know where it is that you should only really it's recommended that you only hit use it hit and run twice a game somewhere I read that okay so um that's pretty much it and this is Tony Porter Cars and Dice TV and this is your compare and contrast the classic boards that were sold all the way into the 90s i believe 92 93 were the last times they were selling these larger boards right these boards are a little bit 14 i think they're 11 and a half and a half they're 11 by 14 i believe four 11 by 14 boards they were being sold into the 90s by appa with a couple adjustments here and there and uh and then of course the app, I compare them to the app journal boards with the kind of modified fielding and some other things that you have to look through. So this is Tony Porter, Cars and Dice TV. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you well. See you soon.